story time about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So a little background information, I was 14 and in 8th grade. And there was this boy that I really liked who lived like 10 minutes away from me. So the one night he asked me if I wanted to hang out. And my mom was strict about me not hanging out with people after 7 o'clock at night. Especially a boy. I wasn't even allowed to hang out with boys. And my grandma, my mom, and my brother and I all lived together. And we all had our own rooms. Mine was on the first floor of the house, so I snuck out the window and I went and hung out with him. So I snuck out at around 3 and came back at around 4 a.m. And my grandma comes into my room to wake me up for school. And I guess that I had been laying on my side and my hair was like pulled up. Because literally all I remember waking up to is her smacking me up out of my sleep and screaming at me. Because there was a hickey on my neck. She's like, I'm telling your mom whenever she gets home. Your window's gonna be screwed shut. And I keep telling her it's not a hickey so she calls my brother over. And he's like, yeah, that's definitely a hickey. Because he likes to kiss her ass. Like for part two. Part two about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So like I said, she's like, I'm telling your mom and I keep telling her that it's not a hickey. And thankfully, my mom already went to work. She had work at 6 a.m. So I got on the bus, I go to school, and I'm talking to my friend and telling her about how I'm literally going to be crucified whenever I get home. And she told me about how her older sister was in like the same situation that I'm in now. So she texted her older sister asking what she did because she never got caught. And I was like, okay, well, if she used makeup, my mom's going to find out because she's not dumb. Well, apparently her older sister burnt herself with a curling iron. Yes, literally burnt herself, but she ended up getting away with it. So fast forward, I get home at around three o'clock and I sneak in through the back door so that way my grandma won't see that I came in the house because she literally would have made me sit in the living room until my mom got home. So I go upstairs and I burn myself with a curling iron, which is not fun. Like for part three. Part three about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So like I said, I snuck in through the back door so that way my grandma wouldn't see me because if she saw me, she would have made me wait in the living room with her until my mom got home. So, you know, burnt myself with a curling iron and my mom gets home. And since I'm on the first floor, I can literally hear my grandma talking to my mom and my brother, of course. My grandma's like, yeah, she has hickeys all over her neck. Which is literally an exaggeration because there was one, one small one. So my mom calls me out to the living room. I go out and she's like, all right, show it to me. And I'm like, show you what? She's like, don't play stupid. Your grandma already told me the whole situation. And I was like, mom, I literally burnt myself with a curling iron. And my grandma's like screaming and freaking out because I'm lying. She's like, you better tell your mother the truth right now. Da -da 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 -da. So I show the burn to my mom. She looks at my grandma and she's like, so you're going to tell me that's not a burn on her neck? And she was like, that's not how it looked this morning, blah, blah, blah. So I got away with it. But now my grandma literally stalks me to see if I'm doing anything wrong so she can tell my mom. Story time about why I will never babysit ever again. So a little background information, I was 17 and a senior in high school. And my parents were super annoyed about the fact that I hadn't had a job since I was 14. So their friends just happened to need a babysitter. So they told me that I had to do it. So fast forward, I go over there super early in the morning and the mom had already left for work. And the dad, who we're going to call Will, he was just about to leave. And before he walked out the door, he told me that there was a list of things that needed to be done before they got home. So their daughter, Autumn, who was five years old, she was still sleeping. And I was reading through the list and it was just normal stuff like nap time at two o'clock, no pop after seven o'clock, that sort of stuff. And then it had an arrow pointing towards the back. And when I flipped the page over, it said, By the way, Autumn is scared to bathe by herself, so please get a shower with her. And I was not comfortable with that, so I called my mom, and I told her about it, like for part two. Part two about why I will never ever babysit ever again. So like I said, I flipped the page over, and it said that their daughter was scared to bathe alone, so I would have to take a shower with her. And I called my mom, and I told her about it. And she was like, well, honey, that doesn't sound that weird. Don't you remember when your little brother was scared of the toilet and we would have to take him to the bathroom and stand there with him for 20 minutes while he tried to go to the bathroom? So I was super annoyed that she was even comparing those two situations. Because first of all, that was my little brother. Second of all, this is just freaking weird. So I told her to bring my bathing suit over and then I did everything on the list. Fast forward, Autumn said that she really liked me so her parents wanted me to come over and babysit again. So I did and whenever I was setting up the shower that day, there was a stack of towels sitting on the toilet. And when I picked it up to move it, a camera fell out of the pile of towels as soon as I picked it up. And it was recording. I was really weirded out, but I wanted to show it to my mom. So I... Part three about why I will never, ever, ever babysit ever again. So like I said, I picked up the stack of towels and a camera that was recording fell out of it. And while I was home later that night, I was waiting for my mom to get home when I got a call from Will. And if you don't remember who that is, that's Autumn's dad. 
And of course I wasn't gonna answer the phone because I was super weirded out and low-key scared. But then he left a voicemail and he was like, hey, so um, I know you have the camera and this is kind of awkward, but I'm gonna need it back. I can pay you whatever you want and I would prefer that we don't tell anybody about this. Sometimes I'm just really amazed at how stupid people are because as soon as my mom got home, I showed her the camera and I let her listen to the voicemail. So my mom called over Autumn's mom. So they called the police and Autumn's mom kept trying to call Will, but his phone was going straight to voicemail. And she was like, yeah, he begged me not to come over here whenever you called. It's been a week since this happened and Autumn's dad is currently running from the cops. Get ready with me while I tell y'all about how me telling my crush that I had feelings for him completely backfired. So I've been stuck in a situation ship for the past six months. We would go on dates like three or four times a week. But I'm not gonna lie, after five months, I'm like, um, come on, like, let's make things official. Fast forward, my New Year's resolution for 2024 was to stop being a chicken shit and be more outgoing. I saw everybody doing the 100 bucket list challenge on Lemonade, and I figured if anything got me out of my shell, it would be this. And up until like three days ago, things were going great. Like, I had already gotten 13 the things done. Well then, I asked Siri to pick a number 1 through 100 and she decides to choose number 28. Which just so happened to be, confess to your crush. But then I thought to myself, you know what, this could actually be a good thing. Because I'm not built for the situationship life. So that was the night that I decided I was going to tell my man who isn't actually my man that it's time to make things official or kick rocks. As we're driving back to my place so he can drop me off, I just decided to rip off the band-aid. I was like, listen, either we need to make things official or we're never seeing each other again. So then he goes, okay, just give me time to take care of a few things first. And I told him no. So then he goes, okay, fine, will you be my girlfriend? And I'm like, yeah, duh. So around 2 a.m. that night, I get woken up to my phone being blown up from an unknown number telling me that I'm a horrible person and that I ruined their family. I had no idea this man had a wife and kids. Anyways, after that, I cut him off, but I'm still getting phone calls from random numbers, which I thought it was him, but it's not. It's actually his wife. Thankfully, I dodged a bullet. If you want to see me complete the rest of this list, definitely join me on Lemonade's 100 Bucket List Challenge. Don't forget to follow me at Kaylee Lees, and hopefully the next challenge is not a fail. Story time about how my fiance cheated on me with 10 other girls. So a little background information, I met this guy on Instagram and we're going to call him Bryce. Now when him and I met, he was stationed in Korea and he refused to ask me to be his girlfriend until he came home. So I waited an entire year for him to ask me to be his girlfriend. Which low-key should have been a red flag, but he made it seem romantic in some twisted weird way. So fast forward, he comes home in February. And he kept to his promise. The first day that we met, he asked me to be his girlfriend. So I say yes, fast forward. Him and I start having a ton of arguments because of things that he was doing while he was in Korea. Fast forward, we're officially together for nine months. So fast forward, of course, he gets deployed to Europe in like September of 2022. So this man decides that he's going to propose to me in July and then beg me to get married to him before he leaves. Now, I may have ignored the first red flags, but I'm not dumb, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with 10 other girls. So like I said, this man begs me to get married to him before he leaves, and thank goodness I didn't because divorce papers would have been served the same day. So fast forward, he starts acting super weird. He's going out 24-7. He's getting drunk. He's not wearing the ring that he begged me to get him. Yes, he literally begged me for a ring so that way women would know that he had a girlfriend. Well, then of course I get a DM from a girl on Instagram asking if him and I were still together. And then after talking to her, I realized he literally made a Tinder two days after he got deployed. And what was his excuse? Oh, I wanted to meet friends to teach me German. And listen, I was not born last night, so I kept that conversation going because I wanted to get to the bottom of what the fuck was actually going on. And then, of course, he finally comes clean that he cheated on me with a bunch of girls. Oh, and you want to know the icing on the cake? One of them was a minor. Yup. After I leave him, he has the audacity to ask for my ring back, but I threatened to tell Story time about how I got pregnant by my boyfriend's younger brother, and he still doesn't know. So a little background information, I am 19 years old, and I am in college. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for about two years, and we're gonna call him Josh. The two years that we've been dating have been super rocky, because he would try to hook up with other girls. Well, no, actually, he wouldn't try. He would hook up with other girls. And then, you know, him and I would break up, and then we would get back together. You know, just your usual toxic relationship. The main reason why I kept going back to him was because he was super popular, and this made me feel like I was never going to find anybody better than him, so on and so forth. Now, Josh's brother is 21 years old, and somehow, some way, him and I started hooking up. Right around after the time I found out that my boyfriend was cheating on me with my cousin. Yes, my cousin. I'm saying that like I'm not hooking up with his brother. Um, anyways. 
Well, one day I realized that I haven't gotten my period in two months, so I took a pregnancy test and it came back positive. Like for part two. Part two about how I got pregnant by my boyfriend's younger brother and he still doesn't know. So like I said, my boyfriend cheated on me with my cousin and somehow that led to me hooking up with his younger brother. Well, fast forward one day, I realized that I haven't gotten my period in two months. So I took a pregnancy test and it came back positive, of course. And the first thing that I did was go to Josh's brother because him and I were hooking up way more than my boyfriend and I were within the past few months. Well, we both came to the conclusion that I should just tell my boyfriend that it's his and see what happens from there. So I told my boyfriend I'm pregnant and he was super happy, he gave me this whole speech about how he's going to be a better boyfriend for me and the baby, which in simpler terms pretty much means, yay babe, I'm going to stop cheating on you since you're pregnant, but only because you're pregnant. So now my boyfriend is raising my one-year-old daughter who he thinks is his and I'm still hooking up with his brother. Story time about why you just can't bring some friends around your boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school. And I have been best friends with this one girl who we're going to call Lily for about two years. Now, Lily and I weren't your ordinary best friends. We were the ones that would party together, but we would never talk about anything serious. And when I mean serious things, I mean like a secret that you don't want anybody to know. Just for a little example, the one time I told her that I thought I was pregnant. And clearly she knew that I was super scared. And I told her, I don't want anybody to know. Please don't say anything. Um, yeah, in about 30 minutes, I had like 20 people asking me if I was pregnant. And then somehow my parents found out. She's also the best friend that you keep away from any guy that you like. Well, I have been dating this guy who we're going to call Jared for six months. And obviously, now that I have a boyfriend, I've stopped hanging out with her as much. But my whole thing is she would never give me a heads up on plans. She would literally just text me and be like, hey, we're going out tonight. And I would text her back and I would be like, sorry, I can't. I already have plans with Jared. So this made her really upset, like for part two. Part two about why you just can't bring some of your friends around your boyfriend. So like I said, she was getting very upset with the fact that she would ask me to make plans last minute and I would tell her that I'm busy with my boyfriend. And this went on throughout Jared and I's whole relationship. And it wasn't like I would ignore her. I would still hang out with her. I just wouldn't go and party and stuff like that because I respected my relationship. She would also always ask me to not bring my boyfriend to these parties. And that's another reason why I wouldn't go. So the one night she's like, listen, you know, come out with me. You can bring your boyfriend. It won't be a problem, which was a shocker. So I was a little bit skeptical, but I said, okay. So we go to this party and usually whenever I'm with Lily, I get really messed up. But I was trying to pace myself this night. And then she's like, come on, you don't mind if she gets drunk, right, Jared? Of course, him wanting me to have fun. He said, no, he doesn't mind. She calls us an Uber and then she asked for my boyfriend's Snapchat just so that way she could check up on us because I was too drunk. The entire ride home, Lily is blowing up Jared's phone and we just think that she's trying to check on us. Um, no. Instead, when we got home, he opened his phone and it was actually Lily sending him a bunch of naked pictures. Story time about how my ex-boyfriend stole all my shit and then gave it to his new girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 23 and I had been dating this guy who we're gonna call Derek for two years. Now at first I thought that our relationship was perfect, of course, you guys know how it goes. But then the one day he came home from work and he told me that he had been cheating on me throughout our whole relationship. He literally had a full-on relationship the past two years that him and I were supposed to be together with another girl. But yeah, he came home from work and he told me, listen, I don't want to be with you, I really love her, you know, it's just not working out. So obviously I go and I find her social media and I tell her. And she just blocks me. She literally just blocks me. And then he told me that she knew that he was also dating me at the same time. So whatever, fast forward, you know, he moves out, he moves in with her, and he is slowly moving his stuff out of my apartment. Like, it literally took him four months to get all of his stuff out of my apartment. Anyway, so the one day he calls me while I'm at work, and he's like, hey, can I come get the keys? I need to get some of my stuff. So obviously, this had been going on the past four months, so I was like, yeah, just come pick the keys up. So he does, like for part two. Part two about how my ex stole all of my stuff and gave it to his new girlfriend. So like I said, he comes, he grabs the keys, and he goes to my house, he's getting all of his stuff. When my neighbor, who is one of my friends, she's like freaking out, calling me over 10 times. Obviously, I'm at work, so I can't answer the phone. And then I get a text from her saying that he's there with his new girlfriend. Well, I guess she isn't really a new girlfriend if he's been dating her the whole relationship that we had. But you guys know what I mean. So I'm freaking out and I call him and then I hear her in the background talking to my dog. Now, obviously, I don't even want this girl in my apartment in general. So I'm like freaking out that she's trying to talk to my dog. So I'm yelling at him. I'm like, I want her out of the apartment. I'll call the police if you guys don't leave. Also, tell her to get the away from my dog. So, you know, he says, okay, hangs up the phone. And I call my neighbor and I tell her, call the police if she goes in my apartment again. And less than two minutes later, my friend calls the police. Because his girlfriend started breaking stuff in my apartment and she took my dog. Literally, like they drove away with my dog and then let it go in the middle of the woods. But I guess it's okay because I got my dog back. Story time about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 14 years old and had just started my freshman year of high school. 
and my brother and his girlfriend were both seniors and we're gonna call his girlfriend Riley. Now Riley and my brother started dating in the middle of the summer and you would think since they just started dating and basically just met each other that I wouldn't know her that well but literally two days after they started dating, she started spending every single day at my house. I'm being serious, like she had a whole duffel bag that had basically her closet in it, but that wasn't the problem. So in the summertime, my parents would plan a lot of family activities, and since they were called family activities, his girlfriend wasn't allowed to go. I mean, I think she would have been allowed to go, but she was also really disrespectful to my mom. So after one of our family days, my parents asked my brother if Riley would be joining us for dinner, and he just ignored them and went up to his room. And my room's right next to his so I could hear everything. And Riley called him like for part two. Part two about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, my room was right next to my brother so I could literally hear everything. And I guess Riley called him and she was complaining about me. She was like, she's the reason why your mom doesn't like me. I feel like she's jealous of me. She doesn't want us to be together. Which was really weird because I didn't give a fuck about what my brother did. So fast forward, school finally starts. And Riley lived about 20 minutes away from us. So my brother told her that he couldn't go and pick her up for school every day. But obviously I would ride to school with him because we lived together. Anyways, eventually she had a problem with that too. So my brother and I had to start leaving 30 minutes early to get to school so we could pick her up. So the first time that we pick her up, we pull up to her house. And obviously I'm in the front seat and she's just standing there. So my brother rolls down the window and he's like, get in the fucking car. We're going to be late. And then she literally has the audacity to start arguing with my brother in front of me about why she should get the front seat instead of me. Like for part three. Part three about why I hated my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, once she got in, she started screaming about how she should get the front seat instead of me. So I turn around and I'm like, last time I checked, you've only been here for two months. Stay in your fucking lane. And then she starts crying because she's like, oh my god, your sister's so mean to me. Like, I just feel like I should have more respect as his girlfriend. So fast forward to the weekend, my mom said that she needs to have a talk with me. And she's like, honey, I know you may not like your brother's girlfriend, but you have to stop being mean to her. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've only had one conversation with her in the last week. And that was to tell her to stay in her fucking lane. And then I told her about everything going on. So she calls my brother down to ask him if it's true. And my brother was pretty pissed off at me, but he wouldn't lie. So my mom said that she was not allowed over the house anymore. And that he wasn't allowed to go pick her up from school until I got my license. So that just caused more problems between her and my brother. So he broke up with her. And then she started spreading rumors that she broke up with him because there was something weird going on between him and I. Story time about how my ex-boyfriend stole all my shit and then gave it to his new girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 23 and I had been dating this guy who we're gonna call Derek for two years. Now at first I thought that our relationship was perfect, of course, you guys know how it goes. But then the one day he came home from work and he told me that he had been cheating on me throughout our whole relationship. He literally had a full-on relationship the past two years that him and I were supposed to be together with another girl. But yeah, he came home from work and he told me, listen, I don't want to be with you, I really love her, you know, it's just not working out. So obviously I go and I find her social media and I tell her. And she just blocks me. She literally just blocks me. And then he told me that she knew that he was also dating me at the same time. So whatever, fast forward, you know, he moves out, he moves in with her, and he is slowly moving his stuff out of my apartment. Like, it literally took him four months to get all of his stuff out of my apartment. Anyway, so the one day he calls me while I'm at work, and he's like, hey, can I come get the keys? I need to get some of my stuff. So obviously, this had been going on the past four months, so I was like, yeah, just come pick the keys up. So he does. Like for part two. Part two about how my ex stole all of my stuff and gave it to his new girlfriend. So like I said, he comes, he grabs the keys, and he goes to my house. He's getting all of his stuff. When my neighbor, who is one of my friends, she's like freaking out, calling me over 10 times. Obviously, I'm at work, so I can't answer the phone. And then I get a text from her saying that he's there with his new girlfriend. Well, I guess she isn't really a new girlfriend if he's been dating her the whole relationship that we had. But you guys know what I mean. So I'm freaking out and I call him and then I hear her in the background talking to my dog. Now, obviously, I don't even want this girl in my apartment in general. So I'm like freaking out that she's trying to talk to my dog. So I'm yelling at him. I'm like, I want her out of the apartment. I'll call the police if you guys don't leave. Also, tell her to get the away from my dog. So, you know, he says, okay, hangs up the phone. And I call my neighbor and I tell her, call the police if she goes in my apartment again. And less than two minutes later, my friend calls the police because his girlfriend started breaking stuff in my apartment and she took my dog. Literally, like they drove away with my dog and then let it go in the middle of the woods. But I guess it's okay because I got my dog back. Story time about how this girl pretended to be my best friend just to go on vacation with me. So a little background information, I was 14 and a freshman in high school and we're gonna call this girl Sophia. Sophia and I met whenever we were in sixth grade and we were inseparable. 
And shortly after her and I had became best friends, my mom thought that it would be nice for us to go on vacation to Hawaii in two years. She also said that my brother and I would be able to bring one friend each. So I asked Sophia if she wanted to come to Hawaii in two years, and of course she said yes. Keep in mind, I was popular, Sophia was kind of lame, and I'm not even saying that just to be mean, but it's true. So over the next two years, her and I are hanging out every day, sneaking out together because we also live like two minutes away from each other. And my brother decided that he was going to bring his friend Noah. And I had a crush on Noah, and Sophia knew this, but she would always flirt with him in front of me. I really should have saw this as a red flag, but you know, we love to ignore those. And then out of nowhere, Sophia starts dressing like me and starts getting more popular in school. Like for part two. Part two about how this girl pretended to be my best friend just to go on vacation with me. So like I said, she had been flirting with this guy that she knew that I liked. And then she starts dressing like me and getting more popular. Which I didn't really care because I was still her best friend. Mainly because she didn't really have any other friends. So fast forward, vacation comes around and we all go to Hawaii. We had the best time ever. And then we come home and I barely hear from her. Like I was putting in all the effort, texting her every day and her responses were dry as fuck. And then she had this boyfriend named Brendan, which I guess that could have been the reason why she wasn't talking to me as much. Because you know, you get into a relationship and all of your focus goes towards that, especially at this age. But the only reason why she started dating him was because he was popular. So they break up and she stopped talking to me altogether. She even blocked me on Instagram. So I asked her what happened and she said that I was a controlling bitch and she didn't want to be friends with me, which doesn't even make any sense because I've never been controlling to her. And then she starts texting me like everything was okay and this went on for a little bit. But after a few months, I just stopped talking to her, but I definitely felt used. 